Hello, everybody. How you doing? Hope your day is going well. Thanks for joining us here on Boxcaster Live. It is Thursday. Welcome aboard, everybody. Takfa, Jacob, all you guys. I'm sure there are others. Please chime in. We want to hear what you have to say on all the topics of the day. And if you like what we're doing, of course, let the world know that. Smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, shame on you. Do so. We need it. And we're on Reddit right now. Boxcaster Boxing on Reddit. We can hear from you there as well. And if you like our content, you can also get it in a TV show format. That's right. On Amazon. Amazon Prime in the U.S. and the U.K. El Americano, how you doing, my friend? FMJ versus CM Punk. Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus CM Punk. Sure, why not? We've seen Floyd in a wrestling ring. He's not a bad performer. Overacts a little. But still. And we, we, we've... Well, maybe that's... An, is that in a cage? You know, if that's in an octagon... I'm going to go with Floyd over Punk. Yeah, that's a hot take. Floyd Mayweather Jr. beat CM Punk in an MMA match. Yep. What could Punk do well? Nothing. He works. He can work a mic better than Floyd. With his pipe bombs, so to speak. I think that's what he calls them. Sorry, wrestling dorks. I, I can't. At this point, I'm slightly out of my depth, but CM Punk with his pipe bombs has the mic edge over Floyd. Other than that, sorry. Uh-uh. Floyd all the way. I know CM Punk's been in training and he had a fight, which he lost badly, I believe. Now to a decent fighter, Mickey, Mickey Gall. I mean, Gall, good fighter, but certainly infinitely better than CM Punk. And so, ipso facto, I think Floyd, better than Punk, not better than Gall. So, Floyd over Punk. Anywho, we're all over the place here. Well, that's all right. It's a slow news day. Speaking of Mayweather, he's trolling like hell. For Connor or somebody, letting the world know he wants to get in an MMA cage. Why he's trolling anything. Anyway, I don't believe him. Takfa, Floyd wouldn't even beat wouldn't even beat the woman in the UFC. Not so are you saying that the women are somehow beatable because they're women? The women, you know what the women in the UFC would do to Floyd? He would be absolutely Hammered. He would be tied into a pretzel and fractured up. El Americano, thank you for cause being the like button. Not sure what that means. Sounds dirty. You drugged it, molested it, and it's going to wake up with its underwear around its ankles? Is that what you did? Allegedly. Tyson Fury stripped of the ring title. Now, where are we on the ring title? One, two, punch your face. How you doing, buddy? Yes, we'll talk about the douche LaGreco is. There is a douchebag factor that's quite high in that fight. Perhaps the highest we've seen since Malinaji Broner. Where the DB factor, that was around 9.6. This one, I think, is a, it's, it's 8.2. The DB factor. And that's just LaGreco. Can you imagine LaGreco Malinaji or LaGreco Broner? Now, Khan, of course, is a D-bag too, as my conscience over my left shoulder is telling me. What? How else would you describe a man who publicly says that his wife is cheating on him with the heavyweight champion of the world? And then can, goes on and masturbates on a webcam. And then tearfully apologizes about it. I mean, 
not that that's a crime at all or anything. Who amongst us here hasn't? I know, Takfa. I know you didn't mean it. I know the women are amazing in the UFC. The women beat Floyd. I know. I know. You're an open-minded, progressive man. That's why you're here. It's tough to infer tone with these one uh, with these one line responses. So I apologize. Floyd would be in Cyborg's division. Now, interesting. I'm going to have a hot take on this. Given that Cyborg is more of a stand-up fighter, I think Floyd wins that fight. Except maybe if it goes to the ground, then may God have mercy on his soul. My my the MMA genius over my left shoulder, letting me know that Cyborg has a black belt in jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But Floyd has had many Brazilians in his day. So I don't know. That's a bit of a toss-up. Of course you have to go with Cyborg, kinda. Yes, I think Cyborg over Floyd, but I give Floyd a, uh, a punch a chance, ironically. He hasn't knocked out anybody in, well, hasn't knocked out, well, he knocked out Connor. Yes, I know. He stopped Connor. But that's his first stoppage since, uh, I think, the Clinton administration. Fury stripped. What do I mean? Ring Magazine stripped Tyson Fury of their heavyweight title. You know, the one that they think is so valuable and means so much because it honors the legacy and importance of linear champions. Essentially, they're recognizing linear champions in the sport, and they're saying now because he's been so active that they're stripping him of his title. It was one of the belts that Fury would always say that you know he had. He was the Ring Magazine and linear champion. Well, he can still he still has a hold on the linear champion, but Ring Magazine has taken their belt back. Apparently, it'll be up for grabs between the winners of Parker and Joshua and Rios. Uh, no, Ruiz and Rios. Ruiz and, no, Ortiz. Oh, my God, Jason. How could I get those names confused? And Ortiz and Wilder. Yep, Ring Magazine has stripped them. Do we care? Is it important? Does Tyson Fury care? I think he might because he can't say he's Ring Magazine champion anymore. I personally don't care. I know who the champ is. I don't need an arm of Golden Boy Promotions to tell me who the champion is. LR. Jason, you heard the great news. The Gassi of Dortico is now being for the Super WBA Cruiserweight title. I heard, and I'm so giddy. It is great news. It's wonderful news. It's made that fight even better because the, the Regal key... Historic WBA super title is up for grabs. Why do we jump through the hoops for these monkeys at the WBA? I'm going to stop mentioning. I will mention them to mock them. I will not identify a world title as being from them. Not on this live webcast. I won't. In a, in a jungle full of diseased creatures... The WBA is monkey zero for Ebola. The winner of the World Boxing Super Series is now officially undisputed. They would have been undisputed in my mind anyway. I don't need the WBA to confirm that for me. Well, there's still Lebedev. The fact that they recognized Dennis Lebedev as a champion after he was defeated by Gassiev in what was supposed to be a unification fight, but because Lebedev struck some deal with the WBA, they let they let they let uh, Lebedev slide with the belt, even though he lost in a fight with another world champion. They are a joke, and the sooner we stop mentioning their title as being anything other than a joke, the better off we'll be, and the better off sport will be. Let's see, Rainier, what do you see? Tyson Fury is irrelevant. Please let us all stop talking about him until he finally fights again. Ooh. You know, part of me, 
part part of me is disgusted by that, but only because I really like Tyson Fury. But part of me has to admit you're kind of wrong because he does a lot of talking, and we haven't seen him fight in a dog's age. All, dog's age. Although he's getting into shape. Have you seen the latest? The latest pictures. He's looking in fighting form, physique wise. I mean, who knows if you know? Who knows how good he is? If he's still the Tyson Fury that dominated Klitschko of nearly four years ago, who knows? That's more like three years ago. Yes, Gassi of Dordicos for the un for the super cruiserweight title. The fact that Lebedev still has the regular title is a joke. The fact that there is a regular title is a joke. The fact that they're going to make the winner of the tournament not make they're not going they don't WBA doesn't make anybody do anything unless you're Keith Thurman and you sing a song and he dances to it. But generally speaking, I guess if you only have one belt, what they say is important. If you prize that stupid belt, that stupid black belt of theirs, which by the way looks nice, it's a nice looking belt, but it's a joke. LR Chigger. Uh, now the, detra- the the detractors of the tournament can't use that argument anymore. Who has a bad thing to? How 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 jaundiced are we? as boxing fans, that someone might look at the work of the World Boxing Super Series, especially the especially the cruiserweight division, and have anything bad to say about it. What an indictment of us as boxing fans, how joyless we are, that we should criticize the World Boxing Super Series. Why? Because it's not making money? That's their problem, not our problem. They're giving us the best tournament, boxing tournament ever, and on the on the super middleweight side, they're giving us Groves Eubank, and the winner against Callum Smith. Come on, what are we complaining about? Oh, Callum Smith has to get by Bramer, of course. But what are we complaining about? Are we mad at them that they haven't optimized the money they're getting back on it, and somehow we're going to crap on the thing because it's losing money on the whole initiative because it's losing money? It's their problem. Why don't we just enjoy the great product they've given us and support them in the future so they can do more instead of just sitting on the side, watching it for free on the internet, and crapping all over them. (laughs) Losers. There's so much schadenfreude amongst boxing fans. At times, I just want to snap out of it and go do something else. Or how about we love the sport. I'm not saying everybody's, you know, Everybody's flying on a unicorn and sprinkling happy dust, fairy dust, and the good people of Happyville. No. There's stuff that goes on in boxing, but come on, man. Getting mad at the World Boxing Super Series because losers don't know how to run a tournament. Well, who does? It's never been done before. You try it. And you, you get it a quarter as good as what they've given us on both sides of the tournament. L.R. Chigger asking, how many rounds before Price gets KO'd by Povetkin? You're going to need a, a decimal point for this one. 0.666. Two minutes. And I think that would be, if they're setting an over-under, I'd have to bet the over. I mean, who doesn't see David Price being intubated? Because of that fight. Yeah, it's just a, that's crazy. Went over that yesterday. That's just a crazy, crazy. I understand what Eddie's dreaming of. If I woke up and had a wet dream like that and I had the possibility of setting it up, I would try so. I'd do it. Because you know, that could have been the greatest wet dream he ever had. Wait, I could get David Price and Anthony Joshua in a ring together? How do I do it? How do I do it? I know. I know. I'll put Price in against... <laughs> But bad kid. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. That's going to be a great fight this weekend. Gassy of Dordicos. It's a great weekend. It's one of those weekends like, I got to do bold predictions. I got to come up with five fights. Wow. What's going on in the UK with Chamberlain and Oakley? 
What's the buzz there? I'm loving British beef over here. The best name for, by the way, the best name for a fight I can recall in a very long time. Pro gay, pro gray versus posto, El Americano. I think I agree with you. The Swamp Monsters coming out party. He already had a bit of one when he, he just waylaid Diaz around six, seven months ago. I, I think Regis Progre is top three in the division. I got him, Josh Taylor, and who else? Only 140. Who's that? Terry Flanagan. Oh, Terry Flanagan's up there. I'm not going to crap all over Turbo. I like Terry. I don't know if he's top three. Maybe Progre. You could say maybe, you know, maybe, maybe Postal. Emmett Oliver. How you doing, Emmett? Fury stripped even though he was suspended for two years by UCAD. He was never suspended ever for a failed test. Just told the testers to piss off as they were showing up every day. But here's the thing, though, Emmett. By refusing to take a test, you're kind of admitting that you've got something to hide. And even though, yes, they're getting on his nerves, and who wants to pee on demand in the presence of total strangers? I get it. In not doing it, you are not admitting guilt, but you're inferring guilt. So I understand the kerfuffle about refusing to pee into a cup. Roundhouse Rainier, only chance for David Price of winning is, is when Terry O'Connor is a referee because he's so biased and in Eddie Hearn's pocket. You saw my Terry O'Connor impression. I don't know if it, I don't know if it holds up, but like He's always doing this. He's always wondering something. Or like he's act, he's acting like the fighters are imbeciles. Like, what are you doing that? Why are you why are you clinching? I don't understand. I told you not to, yet you're doing it. He's he's got a bewildered look about him, like he's doing this for the first time. Yet I've seen him referee hundreds of fights. And everyone it looks like he just graduated and this is his first time stepping into the ring. Postal is a high-risk fight for Pro Gray. I totally agree with you. El Americano doesn't like the fact the fight's in Miami, Ohio. Oklahoma, Miami, Oklahoma. There's a lot of Miamis, aren't there? There is a Miami, Ohio, Miami, Florida, Miami. I think it's in Oklahoma they call it Miami. It's not Miami. The Buffalo Run Casino. Is that where Pro Gray is? I thought that fight was in, was it South Dakota, I thought. Anyway, it's off the beaten path, wherever it's happening. Some casino in some backwater somewhere is hosting a pretty good fight. LR saying, oh, he thinks Oakley wins by stoppage. Love to be wrong, though. Is Oakley well regarded in the UK? Because clearly he's a terrific physical specimen of a fighter. Tall, fast, yet awkward, and can punch. And guys, if you like what we're doing here, click on like, dear God. And if you haven't already, subscribe, darn it. Has everyone here subscribed to BoxCaster? I hope so. If not, it's a, it's a condemnation on me. I'm not doing something right. A few people have not been, have not subscribed yet or waiting. What are you waiting for? <coughs> The other issue that's popped up, and it's pretty divisive, ring card girls, yay or nay, because in the UK, both promoters have said, yay, you're keeping ring card girls. I don't care what F1's doing. I don't care what darts are doing. We're keeping the girls. Wrong, right. Could care less, don't want to be told what to do, is taking them out overly PC, is leaving them in to caveman. What are your thoughts? Reed Progray is a Houston boy by way of New Orleans. Yep. Yeah, no, he's, he's got that cool accent. 
Price's chin is almost like Khan. It's almost Khan like. I would say Price's chin is worse than Amir Khan's. At least Amir Khan gets knocked out by terrific fighters. The best fighter that's knocked out Amir Khan is probably Thompson, Tony Thompson. I mean, he's the best of the four that have done it. Four or three, I can't, I don't have his record in front of me, but all his losses have been stoppages, and there have been a few. And he's just in the, hey, let's build him up and make him seem like he's pretty good and give him some confidence phase in his career. How'd that go? Ooh, El Americano. Tecate is greater than Corona. Top rank. Ooh, you see, this is interesting. This is going in a direction I wasn't expecting this to go. Yes. Let's rate the ring card girls. Let's not say whether they should go or not. Let's rank them. And then the loser's got to leave. Let's ban the loser of this competition. The Tecate girls. Women. The Tecate women are absolutely sensational. If anyone thinks it's an easy job, looking good and smiling and making the smile seem sincere for hours on end, you are so very wrong. And the Takate girls make you think as they scan the room with their eyes, those beautiful eyes, and that's those smiles, and when they look at you, they're actually smiling at you. They make you think they're smiling at you as an individual. This, that is a terrific feat. It's, it's, they do. I challenge any one of you to get in a bikini, hold up a sign, stand bow-legged in a way with your butt sticking out and your legs straight and stiff, holding up a sign like this and smiling, and you try pulling it off. Not for minutes on end, on end, for hours on end, because those ladies, they're not girls, they're ladies, are in and around the casinos doing all that stuff all day. It's not just, hey, I'm on stage and let's go back and, you know, let's go back and relax and take the smile off. No, they're doing it all day. Dylan Goldsmith, I like girl, beautiful girls as much as the next guy, but they serve no real purpose. Boo! And if you want to increase a female fan base and not undermine your female fighters, may as well get rid of them. Oh, you must be. You just must be the life. You must be the life of every party, Dylan Goldsmith. Let's have a party. Yes, let's. Is Dylan coming? No. Oh. Dylan Goldsmith, now you are smart as a whip. And listen, if I wasn't on here, I'd probably agree with you. And you need, listen, you need to, here's the weird thing. Boxing needs female fans. The easiest way of doing that is by bringing in female fighters. So the female fans have athletes they can relate to. Boxing doesn't want to do that. Yet Frank Warren was saying a quarter of his audiences are females. This, in spite of the fact that he's got ring card girls, and in spite of the fact that his one female fighter has appeared on all of two shows domestically. El Americano. I meet Takati girls at the grocery beer aisle sometimes. You know, maybe we'd go a long way at El Americano if we called them Takate ladies. They're not girls anymore. Yes, they're women. Yes, they're beautiful. Takate women. Let's call them women, not even ladies. Although, when did lady become bad? Oh, my God. Can't say ladies now. Lady now. We could say ladies. I think lady is a, it's not a pejorative. Lady to me is like, you're a beautiful lady. If I said to somebody, you're a beautiful lady, would I get, uh, it's woman? I might, in which I would retract the compliment. I would say you're an ugly, humorless biatch.
All, Emmett Oliver, Tranny be in the ring next. Package upstairs. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the the ring tranny. It could be worse. But I, I get the notion that they're a little antiquated, and that maybe the sport should progress and try to increase the female viewership. That that would be a smart business move. You might piss off, you might piss off the regulars. But at this point, it's kind of like when you watch Kitchen Nightmares, and Gordon comes in, and he's confronting the chef about the menu, and he says, "But the regulars love it. The regulars, you got eight people here." Do you want this place full of happy, new consumers, new clients? Or you want to make the, you know, the 20 regular guys, keep them placated? Now, of course, boxing is doing very well in spite of the fact that there's nary a female fighter in sight aside from Katie Taylor and occasionally Nicola Adams and Cecilia Brackis somewhere. And over here, we've got Clarissa Shields. But there are other great women that don't get exposed, and this work could be doing a hell of a lot better if they do. And when they fight, you could have ring card boys. Hey, ring card men, sorry. We have ring card men and ring card women. The women do the men's fight, and the ring card men do the women's fight. I don't have a problem with that. Or we could just do a computer. I mean, I rely on my computer for so much sexual gratification anyway. Call them what they label themselves as, as Takate girls until further notice. Did they really call themselves girls? I know they're told to call themselves girls. They're probably like, you know, I'm kind of a woman. <laughs> Wilder versus Ortiz. This is a sign that Deontay Wilder is the real deal, my friends. Yet, he still gets crapped on like a bird's nest. It's unbelievable how much feces everybody pours on poor Deontay. But the fact that he's facing Ortiz, the second time he's made a Luis Ortiz fight, who else has done that? Everyone else would have been, phew, he got tested positive. Thank God. Let's move on. And he's like, no, 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 no. You get back here. We're fighting. Come on, man. So much props for that. So much props for signing on to fight Povetkin in Russia. Yet no one says that. He fights bums. Come on. That's a great fight. I like Wilder. I really do. I like Wilder in this fight. I think he should go out and he should absolutely try to rip or tease his head off early and often. The more space and time you give Ruiz or tease, or tease, I keep saying Ruiz, or tease, the more you kind of play into his hand. Can't do that. If, you're, if you are wilder, do what you do all the time. And then... I think the result will go your way. If you try to if you try to outfox Luis Ortiz, you uh, you might be going down the wrong path. Let's get back to the comments. El Americano, what did you say, buddy? I missed it. Everyone's saying good point. Uh, the audience will murder ring card men. LOL. Don't try that at StubHub. No, that probably would not be the best place for it. This is all. It's a cultural thing too. This is. A white first world issue. Really. That's what it is. We are very privileged. We have life pretty good. And certain things are more important to us than they are for other cultures who don't necessarily have it as well off as we do. and don't have as much time to worry about minutiae that we get to worry about. So in the t at the StubHub Center, where you come from a fighting culture that is mostly Mexican and Latino... It's not that big a deal. But I guess we've got too much time on our hands that we're worried about ring card girls. 
or maybe they don't have enough time on their hands. But I, listen, we could, we don't need them. We don't need ring card girls. I've never been to a great fight and thought, oh, those ring card girls. However, I have been to horrible fights where the best thing is the ring card girls, but you were still in horrible fights. I, you know, I get both sides, but really, I mean, the side that makes the most sense to me is the side that says, if you're a promoter, how do we get more people tuning into what we do? And it's not just by saying no more ring card girls. You have to do more than that. However, once you bring in more female fighters, you're going to get more female audience members. And then once you do that, then you maybe you augment the role of the ring card women. But other than that, I'm like, you know, it's part of the show. Plus, you know, if you're offended by ring card girls, you're watching the wrong sport. If you go to a boxing match and the thing that offends you the most as you're watching two people obliterate each other for your pleasure, people who are generally poorer than you if they weren't fighting, and they're doing it for your entertainment and your pleasure and you're cheering them on, egging them on, saying fight harder, kill them, and what's offending you the most are women holding cards. You're in, you know, you've got, you've got some issues. Malik Scott, Stavern, Spilka, this is from Herr Rainier. Malik Scott, Stavern, Spilka, Ariola, Washington, Leakovich were all better technicians than Wilder, and he still knocked him out because Deontay is so powerful, powerful, fast, and athletic. Yes. Uh, Ariola, better technician. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yes. As far as yes, if you if you if you looked at a textbook for what to do in a ring, Malik Scott, Remains Stavern, Arthur Spilka, Chris Ariola, and Gerald Washington and Sergey Lyakovich follow that tux textbook to a greater extent than Deontay Wilder. Yet, you're right, they were all chum in the water for him. He's that strong. He's that powerful. And technique against Wilder doesn't make a difference once he's able to hit you. It doesn't matter that his 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 shots are they're all wrong. They're technically wrong. What's he doing? I mean, look at him. What a clown. You see his footwork? The only footwork I see is the twitching footwork of the guy who's been knocked out. He's like That's the only footwork I care about. Look at his footwork. What a bum. Oh, yeah, the guy that knocks everybody out. He's Sorry, he's not doing it properly. He's not knocking people out properly for you. Again, another sign that uh, boxing fans are impossible to please. Bad apples. The problem is Wilder can't outbox Luis in a million years. Like AJ versus Klitschko, he'll have to KO him. If That's if this fight happens, but I've heard rumors it won't set up in Wilder in Brazil next. Uh, there's always those rumors. So what's wrong with KOing him? That's what he... Okay, Deontay Wilder goes into a fight not thinking, you know what, I could outbox him. He did one time and he thoroughly outboxed Bermain Stavern in the first fight and then said, screw this. I don't want to box more than 30 seconds and stopped him early in the last fight. And so, But he goes in thinking, I'm going to knock people out. This is where we are right now. It's really weird. So he goes... One, he's got a great personality. Two, he's undefeated. Three, he knocks everybody out. I mean, absolutely everybody. Yet, he's, that's not good enough for us. Someone's got to explain to me, what does he have to do? So what if he knocks out Ortiz with one of those windmill shots, that's all he could do is knock someone out. <laughs> I mean, like, you, there's no pleasing some people. He's supposed to knock people out. That's what we're paying money to see him do. But he doesn't do it the proper way. What's the proper way? Show me the right way to knock somebody out. I've never seen a boring way to knock. Oh, and that's not true. The Klitschkos. Would you prefer Deontay Wilder be like the Klitschkos? Who made every fight an excruciating endeavor that looked exactly like the fight before. And they were technically as sound as you can be. Especially Vladimir. 
Would you prefer that as a heavyweight champion? Because I remember those days, and they were painful. Not just for the opponent, but for the audience. More so for the audience. At least the opponent made money. Oh, my God. Give me Wilder over the Klitschko's any day. Any day. He tries to knock people out. The Klitschko's did it by accident in the eighth or ninth round of a 12-round fight that was like watching paint dry. Especially Vladimir because he didn't want to take a chance because he knew his chin was, you know, finely blown crystal. That created a beautiful prism when the light hit it just so. Guys, I got to get running. This has been a blast. I hope you had a good time too. A couple more comments before we split. You should try to outbox them and KO them. The thing is, he's looked pretty bad technically in a lot of his fights until he gets the right hand. Who cares? He looks bad technically, yes. Is it a beauty contest? He's not, you know, it's a judge sport, but he's not getting judged on how he looks in a bathing suit or trunks or congeniality. He's getting judged on his ass-whooping ability. Ortiz is slick with a good counter game. But he can take a punch is the question. We'll find out, Danelle. How you doing, buddy? Hope everything is well. And the man whose name is an alphabet I do not recognize and would offend him if I even tried to speak it and said, and still nobody could beat him. And last, we'll leave with Uncle Bert apostrophe. I think Wilder could take one or more of Ortiz's lefts. But Ortiz might not be able to take one of Wilder's rights. If that's the type of fight we have in store for us, I can't wait. I'm excited about that. And I know Deontay Wilder will be too. Guys, thank you so much. If you like us, let the world know. Smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, get on it. Do it right now. It's only one click and means so much to us. You can catch us on Reddit, on Reddit, Boxcaster Boxing, and Boxing World Weekly can be seen on Amazon Prime in the U.S. and the U.K. and other places throughout the world. Check your Amazon Prime listings to see if we're there. And we've got our uh, Patreon coming up as well. Guys, thank you so very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Join us again tomorrow, not only for Boxcasting News Live, but also for our bold predictions. There's going to be a lot of them. Guys, keep them up. Ciao.